In this video, I'm going to show all the skills needed to make a basic composite in Photoshop. Alright, so obviously the first thing we need to do is open up Photoshop. Once it's open, just click new file up here and then go up to preset details and name it. So I'm going to name mine Sean Mr. Potato Head. And then right here, instead of pixels for what we're doing, I'm going to switch this to inches, change width to 11 and height to 8.5. So it's the same dimensions as a regular piece of paper. And as you can see here for orientation, that's landscape. So it's going to be wider than tall. If you want it to be portrait, just click this one and it'll flip the numbers around. So for me, I'm going to keep it as portrait. And then for resolution, I'm going to have it as 150. You can have it up to 300, wherever you want, but 150 is a decent resolution for what we need. Make sure it's RGB color right here and then just click create. As you can see, that opens up as a blank canvas in Photoshop with the project name right here. And it's also labeled as our background over here within our layers. This is where we're going to start to bring in all of our images for our project and layer them on top of the background. So the next thing we need to do is go and get some images. So you can use Google to try and find pictures, or you can use sites like unsplash.com or pexels.com to find free stock images. Those will be really high resolution, good quality pictures. You just might not be able to find everything. So I'm going to start on Google. I'm just going to click in here and type in, whoops, basketball and search. I'm going to go to images and I'm going to go to tools and change size to large to start. Now, what we're looking for here for our images, we need a head. So this is going to be the head of my Mr. Potato Head. We need two eyes that should be the same object. So that's a second object a nose for third, a mouth, which is fourth, ears, which will be the fifth object, sixth object for the body, and then seventh object for the two arms. So just be aware though, that if you find pictures like this, where it has white background around it, or a, a, you know, a specific color, try not to use those ones right out of the gate. Cause that means somebody else has already taken this picture and Photoshop this basketball out, like has already cut it out of the image. So that's what we're trying to practice here. So avoid ones with a white background unless you really, really need to. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down. You're trying to find ones like this, like where the basketball is on the court, like with when it's within a real image. So I'm just going to scroll down. Maybe I'll pick this one right here. I'm going to click on it. And then the bigger image is going to open up. I'm going to go right click and save image as. I have an assets folder on my desktop and a folder called Mr. Potato Head that I'm going to save everything into. Just make sure you name it for later so you can find it better and then click save. Just be aware that whatever images you're saving here, you want these two numbers to be like a thousand or more. You don't want it to be a lower one because then the resolution is not going to be very good and it's going to make it much more difficult for you to cut things out and it's just not going to look as good. But obviously if you can't find a good one like the or the favorite one that you want to use, like let's say this one does have a white background then feel free to use it. Just probably not for all of them because we still want to practice. Oh, and make sure you pick images of your objects that you can see all the way around the object. Not like this one where there's like a hand covering part of the ball. Make sure you pick ones like I had before where you can see all the way around the object. That'll make it much easier to cut out and use as you wish. If you're using sites like Unsplash or Pexels, just click in here and type in what you want. I'm going to search for a hockey puck for the eyes and you're since these are high resolution you don't need to find the perfect hockey puck like it doesn't have to be the full size of the image like something like this is probably good enough so i'm going to click on that one and then just click on the free download make sure you have your download folder set to your assets folder that i had before so free download i'm going to click on that and then obviously just keep finding images until you have all seven assets that we need all right so once you have all the images that you're going to need and as you can see i've renamed each of them so like football nose oh, basketball glove ears i've even added in a new one for the body so i'm going to use this jersey and put it over top of the table tennis neck once you have everything then we obviously have to start bringing them into photoshop so i'm going to go back to photoshop and just go up to file and down to place embedded and then we're going to pick the object that we're going to start with. So I'm going to start with the football nose. It's going to come in. You're going to see this like cross thing here. Just click this check at the very top. And you're going to see that that goes above the background layer right here. So now just repeat the exact same process. So file place embedded until you've brought all of your images into your project. 
Just be aware that if you have an image like this one where the hockey puck is really small, just take a look up here. My width and height of this image at this size is only 11.77%. So if you have one that you're gonna need a little tiny object within it, feel free to also go to the corners here, the side, and expand the image out to get it to be you know, much bigger before you hit the check mark. So I'm gonna expand that one out, that's a good enough size. Even then, that's still only 39.75% of the size of this image. So get it to be fairly big within your canvas and then click check on those ones. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is just rearrange our layers over here. And as you can see, the one that's at the very top, which is puck eyes, is the one that's at the very forefront of our canvas here. So that's the only one we see because I expanded that one out so much. If I hide it with this little eyeball here, if I click on that, we're gonna see the next one down, which is table tennis neck. If I hide that one, you're gonna see the next one down. So if you ever can't see anything, just click on, let's say table tennis neck and drag it so this double like little blue line appears. So now that one will be in front of the puck eyes one. So really all you're trying to do here is you deal with the head first. So I'm gonna bring the head to the very top and then I'm gonna place my, make sure my eyes, my nose, my mouth and my ears for now are just above the head. So they'll be in front of the head. So I'm gonna make sure the eyes are in front. I'm gonna put the mouth in front, the ears in front and then the nose at the very top as well. So this order doesn't really matter between eyes, nose, mouth, and ears because they're not overlapping. So we're gonna deal with those later. Then I'm just gonna hide them. Hide, 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 and hide. Then I'm gonna deal with the body here. So for me, it's just gonna be the neck is gonna be at the very back and the jersey just has to be in front of the arms. So I'm gonna have the body, then the arms behind the body in my case, and then the table tennis neck behind it. These two could be rearranged, doesn't really matter. Okay, and now we are ready to start cutting out our images. So for me, again, I'm gonna go back to the football nose and I'm just gonna hide everything else so I won't be able to see it, even the background. And if you see, if I click the eyeball in the background, we get this kind of checkerboard thing behind it. That just means that it's invisible. There's nothing there. Okay, so make sure you're selected on the layer that we're dealing with. So I clicked on this football nose layer and all we're gonna do now to cut this out is go over to the fourth tool down, one, two, three, four. And then, so if you don't see this quick selection tool, you might see magic wand like this, just right click and then go over to quick selection tool. You can also use object selection, but we're gonna use quick selection tool and then just click on this button, select subject. Photoshop's gonna do its work and it's gonna do probably a very good job of selecting your object. If it doesn't, so let's say there's like a dent in like that. So I'm gonna zoom in. So let's say there's a selection that of it that's missing. Then just go up to this plus up here, click on the plus, and you can resize your brush here if you need to. So I'm gonna scale it down a little bit and then just paint back in the part that you want to be added into the selection. You don't have to make it perfect. We can fix some of it later, but it's good to start with a pretty good selection right out of the gate. And then the opposite way, Let's say you have a section that you, that's extra that you wanna get rid of from the selection, then just go here to this minus, or you can hold, if you're on the plus, you can hold alt, and you can see within that little circle, it changes from a plus to a minus in there, and that basically switches it right over to this minus, and then you can just paint over the part that you don't want and bring it back down to get the selection that you actually want. Once you have it pretty close to what you need, so I have this little bump out there I'm gonna fix there, then just go up to here, select and mask. It's gonna go into this other properties menu here. I have this view on this red overlay thing. You might be seeing like this or something else. Just click on this little drop down and go to overlay if you want. I don't like it at 100%. I usually bring it down to like 70, 75% so I can see some of the background back there. But this gives you a pretty good look of what you have selected. And for me, the only thing I don't really like about this is this part right at the bottom, these kind of bumps from the grass. But I'm not really gonna deal with that in here. I'm gonna show you a different way to fix that up once we get back into the regular project. In here, all I'm gonna do, and there's a bunch of different things you can do in here. Look in the link in the description below if you want a more detailed explanation of 
all the features and what all of these things do to make a better selection. But for me, I'm just gonna bump the radius a little bit. And as you can see, if I crank this, it's gonna soften the edges. It's, you know, it's selecting more things out here. So you don't wanna go too much unless that works for yours. I'm just gonna bump it just a touch, like maybe one or two up for pixels. I'm gonna smooth it out a bit and that'll help with some of that grass for my image here. And then I'm just gonna go down here, shift the edge back a tiny little bit. And the most important part here is to go to output to and change selection to layer mask and then click okay. So once that comes back in, you're gonna see this is a layer mask. So it adds this mask on, everything that's black is now essentially covered up. It looks like it's erased, but it's just kind of covered up and it basically punches a hole through it to see whatever's underneath it. And whatever's in white, that's what we still see from the image. So if you need to fix anything up, so remember I said I can show you how to fix up this edge to smooth it out a bit. Well, if you're clicked on the mask and you go over to a brush, you're gonna go between black and white. Black is essentially gonna be your eraser. So if I'm on the mask and I have a black brush, it becomes an eraser. And I'm gonna show you why that's happening in a second. And white, if I flick back here, or if you hit X on your keyboard, white becomes kind of a bring it back. It's gonna paint it back in. The reason why mine is acting like this is because I have the opacity at 51%. So for what we're doing here, you wanna crank that to 100, and then just know that this is where you change the size and the hardness of your brush. Zero means that this is gonna be a really blurry edge brush. And we don't, for, for what we're doing, it's probably not good to have it that low. It's probably good around like 80%, somewhere in there for most of your images. And for the size here, that just depends on the, like what you're, what you're dealing with, what object you're dealing with. For me, around this is probably pretty good. So now when I go back, if I'm on white and I paint in here, it's gonna bring all of that back. And so I'm just gonna paint kind of more of a smooth edge there. And then I'm gonna go back to black because now I've added too much. So I can use black to erase the stuff out that I don't want. Okay, so just go along all of your edges. So I'm gonna just keep kind of looking along here and use a brush between black and white to fix up your edges. All right, so once you have everything cut out, we're now going to reposition and scale all of our objects. So I'm gonna hide the arm layer because we're gonna start with the head. So make sure you click on the eyeball for your head layer and make sure you select it on it. Then all we have to do is go Command or Control T. That'll bring up this box around it. And if we go to the corner and slide it in, that'll shrink it down. If we go outside, we can rotate it around and just know that you can type them in here. So I'm gonna go back in here and type this back to zero. And for scale, if you wanted to, you could type in like 50% and it'll shrink down. Just make sure you have this chain thing selected. If it's unchecked, then when we go to the corner, you can now like squash and squish things and change their aspect ratio. You don't really wanna do that. So if you happen to actually do that, like you've squashed it, just click the chain and then click in here and type in a new number. So I'm gonna go 50% and it'll fix it. Then you can go to the corner and scale it how you want. And then to move it, you just click on the object obviously and move it around. So when you're good, just click check. And then again, just repeat that process with everything else. So if you need a second eye, all you have to do is go Command or Control J to make a copy. So now I have Puck Eyes and Puck Eyes Copy. Then just go to your Move Tool, you know, move it over here. And if you want to flip it to just kind of be a mirror image of this one, then just go up to Edit and then down to Transform and go right here to Flip horizontal if you want it to be a sideways flip. So I'm gonna flip that. It's gonna move it away because that image, it flipped it from the whole image. So then just click it and move it back into place. So now those are, you know, just mirror images of each other. If you see anything like this, once you've scaled something, so there's this like white line on the edge here, that just means it didn't get rid of that within the original selection. So just go back to your mask on that layer go to the brush, make sure it's black, and then you can just paint that little section out. And again, remember that whatever's at the top 
is gonna be the furthest to the front. So if you have something like the baseball gloves here for my ears and you don't want them in front of the head, then just select them and drag them below. So I'm gonna click on one of them, then I'm gonna hold control and then click on the other one. So I've selected both and I'm just gonna drag those below. I'm gonna go below the puck eyes for now and then slide this down. I'm gonna go below the basketball head and now they're gonna be tucked in behind the basketball. For the jersey layer, I actually have to go Commander Control T and I'm gonna scale it up just a little bit to kind of match the size and then bring it down to about right there. You know, you can use your arrow keys. I'm just clicking the right arrow key a bunch of times or up and down to kind of position it more accurately and then click check. Then I'm just gonna rotate the ping pong paddle into place. So I'm just gonna match this one with kind of the shoulders of the jersey. And right now we can't see the paddle, so I'm gonna click check, and then I'm gonna move all of this together. So I'm gonna click on the baseball glove ears. That's the very bottom thing of the head here. I'm gonna to slide to the very top, hold shift, click on the very top layer, whoops, right there. And then now I can just click and move and it'll all move together. So I'm just gonna bring that up like that a little bit so we can see that neck and we're good to go. At this point, the only thing we have left to do is add in a background image. So I'm gonna close this down and I have, I've just typed in football stadium in Pexels and you wanna pick one that has a, like the proper aspect ratio. If I tried to put this as the background, it might look kind of weird. I mean, he could be in the stands right here posing for a picture with that in the background, but I'm gonna put him on the field here. So I'm just gonna click on this one, click download, go back into Photoshop. I'm gonna go slide right down here to the bottom, click on my background layer and then go file, place embedded. This time, double click on my background image. It's gonna place it in. I'm gonna scale it up to the size that I want, at least uh, beyond my you know, canvas size there. I can go much bigger. As you can see, it's still only 34.46. So if I wanted to, I could scale it even more without worrying about resolution. So I'm gonna scale it to there, click check. And then all you wanna do is kinda of go back through your image now that you have you know, the actual background image in there to see if you can find any more kind of errors within your selection. So I can see this box right here that looks like it's part of the ping pong paddle here. That might be the thing that's outlining this. So again, just click on your mask for anything, go over to your brush and use a black brush to erase, you know, get rid of any kind of extra bits that you don't want as part of your image. And then if you want as a final touch, you can also blur your background as well, or maybe even adjust the exposure of it. So to do that, just click on your background layer, go to this little half circle thing, click on that. For now, just add a curves. So if you wanna darken it, you can just click in the middle here, slide it down to you know darken the image to make your you know Mr. Potato Head thing pop a little bit more. And if you want it to blur, just click on it again, go up to filter, down to blur and just select Gaussian blur and you know decide on your radius here. So I'm just gonna bump it up just a tiny little bit like that to make it a slightly blurry background and then just click okay. And then as a final, final touch, if you go to the very top layer, go back to the little half circle thing, you can put on something like a color lookup, which is gonna impact everything below it. So to change that, you just go up here to the very top thing where it says load 3D LUT. Photoshop has a bunch of built-in ones here. You can also download other ones from the interwebs. So I'm just gonna go crisp winter so you can see that it'll affect everything underneath it. So you can make it look candlelight. You know, it's basically just adding a filter to the entire image. So I'm gonna select fall colors. If you wanna adjust the intensity of it, just go to opacity and slide it down. So this would be with nothing that's full opacity, full filter, and then you can just scale it down to what you want. That just helps tie all of your kind of images together to make it look like it's one image together without doing too much work. And that's it. That's how you make a very simple composite in Photoshop. If you got something out of this video, make sure to drop a like. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and I'll catch you next time.